The NSA is. You you got that right. The NSA is always watching. They uh, <laughs> they had it right. How old is that song? Does anybody know? Well, they knew way back then that people were tapping your phones in mid-80s. Okay, so before the whole internet craze, but uh, they were watching you back then and have even more of a dragnet on you now. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Radio Show. I'm Jakari Jackson filling in. I want to thank Dave Knight, of course, for doing the first two hours. And now we're going to go to Paul Joseph Watson, who's going to take us out for the rest of the show. Paul? Hi, Jakari. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're talking about the um, death of Michael Hastings, the Rolling Stone journalist. Now, as you know, we often get accused of saying that everything's a conspiracy theory. I'm not. I don't involve myself in that. I think that certain events are uh, accidents or genuinely organic events. An example would be the Woolwich attack last month. I put out a YouTube video which ended up getting 500,000 viewers, basically saying that, yes, this was a real event. It, was, it wasn't staged by crisis actors. Um, and we got a lot of heat for that. But now this incident involving Michael Hastings, the Rolling Stone journalist, um, certainly has a lot of suspicion attached to it uh, with new developments today. So if you want to introduce, you know, what happened, then we can get into the evidence. Since he was a Rolling Stones writer, uh, he was allegedly driving down the street in his Mercedes Benz at a high rate of speed. Uh, the story says he allegedly struck a tree and the car burst into flames. Now, I'm very interested in hearing from Mercedes as to whether or not their car spontaneously combust. I'd love to hear them, uh, you know, retort that statement. But uh, if you watch the watch the videos or see the pictures, you'll see that most of the damage done to the vehicle appears to be done to the back. You can see it right there if you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. And also has some hefty damage to the front. But why is the back end so heavily damaged if he struck a tree head on? Uh, that's the question that many people are asking. There's speculations that there may have been a bomb planted in the vehicle, speculations maybe even a drone took him out. You know, like I said, I can't vet that one way or the other. But he had also made some uh, very powerful enemies, one uh, McChrystal, as well as many other high-ranking officials, just didn't like this guy. And he also said himself, Hastings did, you know, when you go against these dudes, <laughs> just a paraphrase, he said, when you go against these dudes, a lot of them want you dead. Precisely, and that's what he was most known for, was the 2010 Rolling Stone expose of General Stanley McChrystal, where he basically exposed the fact that the top generals in the military were being uh, denigratory towards the Obama administration. They were, they were having bickering between the two. And that ended up, obviously, in General McChrystal being fired and replaced with Petraeus. Uh, according to LA Weekly, uh, Hastings was also working on an expose of the CIA uh, in the weeks before his death. And we also found out that he contacted a WikiLeaks lawyer in the very hours before the quote accident. That's right. Fearing the fact that he was being investigated by the FBI, which the FBI came out today and denied that they had any dealings with him, despite the fact that his body was only identified yesterday as a result of the coroner in Los Angeles matching the fingerprints with those held on file by the FBI. And we know so the, the FBI never lies, Paul, because they had a situation <laughs> with the Tamerlan uh, associate, the boxer, the MMA fighter, and they go and talk to this guy. And first the guy lunged at him because he had a knife, and then he didn't have a knife, and they just started shooting, and he ended up dead. So we know that they never falsify any, uh, any statements. Well, exactly. I mean... That carried on for about a week, didn't it? This guy was shot six times in the head, Todashev. He was obviously a, a friend with one of the accused Boston bombers. For about almost a week, if I recall, the FBI was saying he had a weapon, he lunged at them, it was self-defense on behalf of the agents. Later had to admit that was complete baloney. He didn't have a weapon, he didn't lunge at anyone. And that investigation seems to have just, you know, tailed off into nothing. And he also told uh, his friend that he didn't want his friend to leave because he was in fear for his life. Precisely. And there's also this, this new report about the FBI, which came out yesterday. Um, they investigated themselves, basically, in incidents of FBI shooting other people involved mm -hmm. in cases over the last 20 years, since 1993. And in 150 incidents of people being shot by the FBI, I believe it was 80 killed, 70 injured. The FBI said that 
There was no wrongdoing in any of those 150 cases, despite the fact that one was known to be somebody they mistook for a bank robber. Mm. They shot and, I believe, injured him. He got he won in court. He got a settlement. And still, the FBI cleared themselves and said that that wasn't a case of wrongdoing in FBI agent shooting other people. In every single case, 150 people shot over the last 20 years, the FBI says no wrongdoing. So based on that evidence, can you really trust them that they had no involvement with Hastings, even though they identified his fingerprints from the body mm. as a result of matching them with FBI prints of Hastings that they had on record? So they must have had some dealings with him, but now they come out today and say, we had nothing to do with it, despite the fact that Hastings, in the hours before his death, contacted this WikiLeaks lawyer and said they were investigating me. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, reports are still coming in. I'm interested in what the eyewitnesses have to say. They say they heard, or some say they saw, some said they heard an explosion go off. And then, you know, the engine is flying down the street and so forth. And I think about, you know, when you watch a, uh, a NASCAR race or so forth and you see these horrendous wrecks, there's a lot of shrapnel and so forth. But I've, I don't recall ever seeing an engine fly down the raceway. Well, here's the thing. This is what strikes me about it. And I'm not a technical expert in any of this, but this is what a lot of the people on all the car websites, all the vehicle experts are saying. The engine and the uh, transmission from the vehicle was found this is this is public knowledge now. It was found, and we've got pictures of it, 100 feet away from the scene of the crash, the supposed crash up against the tree. So the engine flies out 100 feet away, uh, and that, that's not suspicious. They also had a white sheet, if you look at some of the pictures. Mm -hmm. They've put a white sheet over the front of the vehicle for whatever reason, I don't know. Some people are claiming the front of the vehicle is basically entirely missing, which is not consistent with a crash. It's more consistent with some kind of incendiary device. Mm -hmm. And even those who are calling us, you know, calling the questioning of his death a, a trutherism in that pejorative uh, debunking term, even they're saying that certain aspects of this are suspicious. And to not ask questions about it in light of the fact that we know he had made numerous enemies in high places, CIA, FBI, the military generals, it would be completely remiss not to ask questions about it. And then on top of that, his colleagues all said he was paranoid, he was freaked out, he was a nervous wreck in the days before this happened. He, this is a quote, he was incredibly tense and very worried and was concerned that the government was looking in on his material, said one of his colleagues. Also, his editor at BuzzFeed, Ben Smith, said that Hastings had told his family and friends, quote, he was concerned that he was under investigation. And then another friend of Hastings said he was very paranoid that he was being watched by the FBI. So all his friends are saying he's paranoid, he's a nervous wreck. We know he was also very concerned about the AP wiretapping scandal of journalists. He believed he was a target. He was doing stories on the CIA. He was doing a story on the FBI in relation to the Petraeus scandal. Uh, and he winds up dead after his Mercedes, which is one of the safest cars in the world, basically a brand new model, appears to explode into flames after hitting a tree. Then you look at some of the pictures, there's very little damage to the tree, and the actual crash seems more consistent with the vehicle having some kind of incendiary device planted in it mm -hmm. rather than just a straightforward crash. That's not what I'm saying. That's what a lot of the experts on these vehicle websites have said about it. So you tie it in with the fact that he was a known enemy of the establishment. He had all these uh, blockbusters apparently coming up, about to be released. As you said earlier, Jakari, he had received death threats from staffers linked to McChrystal. They said, we're going to come after you, we're going to kill you. He also received death threats from other people, which is documented in his book. You've got the death threats, you've got, he's a nervous wreck before, he's paranoid, apparently under investigation by the FBI, uh, getting ready to release all these stories. Exactly. Um, now, Paul, I want to chime in on one thing that you said that's very important. We talked about the TARP over the vehicle. Why would they need a TARP to cover up this vehicle? I think about a similar situation on 9-11 at the Pentagon when they were uh, taking, I guess, shrapnel or whatever else out of the Pentagon and they brought out this big blue TARP to cover up whatever they were bringing out. Like, why do you need to cover that up? And not even talking about the Pentagon, but talking about a car wreck. 
I've never seen a car wreck where they covered up anything beside the body of the victim. Well, that's what my first thought was. Maybe they're covering up to hide the charred body of the victim. But if you look, it's, you know, you could just look in the passenger window and see the victim. So that can't be the reason for it. The reports that I've read state that the police arrived on the scene almost immediately, which in, you know, these days of austerity and cutbacks, you rarely see that. It takes them at least 10, 15 minutes. So they were on the scene immediately. Um, this this white top gets thrown over the vehicle, and then you've got all the questions about the damage to the vehicle. There appears to be, you know, the, the front of the car appears to be completely missing in a couple of photos, which suggests that's why they put the top on, for whatever reason, I don't know. So there are a lot of questions about it. There's a lot of motive behind it. That's the thing. If you take the example of Woolwich, which I said was a, a natural incident, wasn't staged according to the evidence, um, there seemingly was no motive to stage that incident. But in the, in the death of Hastings, there's motive on behalf of a ton of different people linked to, you know, the highest positions of power, CIA, FBI, Department of Justice. OK, so Paul, Paul, hold that thought. We have to go to break. And you, Paul's bringing up a very good point. We'll talk about all that. We'll talk about the FBI and their drones. They say, yeah, we have drones, but we don't use them all that much. We'll talk about all that right on the other side. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. I like Johnny Cash. It reminds me of uh, that debate. I think it was a GOP debate, and they asked uh, Michelle Bachman, do you like Johnny Cash? Do you like Elvis better? And she's like, uh, uh, uh. I was like, you can't answer that simple question if you like Johnny Cash or Elvis. I like Johnny Cash, but each is um. Now, before we go back to Paul Joseph Watson, I'm Jakari Jackson filling in for Alex Jones. Uh, myself and Paul are going to be hosting for the, the remainder of the show. Go to the InfoWars shop and pick up this State of Mind, the DVD, and also the Blu-ray. Available. It's a great film about mind control, about many things. Alex is in it. Many other people are in it. I believe we're selling that exclusively at the InfoWars shop, so definitely go and pick yours up today. Now, before we go back to Paul Joseph Watson, I have this article right here that we were referencing talking about the FBI. The FBI has received aviation clearance for at least four domestic drone operations, and it goes on to have the quotes from Mueller where he says, we very, very rarely use these things in a minimal way and very seldom and very few and all these very small accounts uh, according to him so paul you were also talking about the fbi so go ahead and finish your thought on that yeah well with regard to the drones that trying to sell this myth that it's you know just a few occasions they've used them for years the department of homeland security has been pouring millions of dollars into local police departments to develop domestic drone programs for quote public safety if you go to an article I wrote back in February, DHS advances plan for public safety drones. This documents how their program, Robotic Aircraft for Public Safety, has been ongoing for years. Uh, police departments get anything from a quarter to a half million dollars every time they launch one of these domestic drone programs. So it's already been underway domestically for years under the auspices of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, and the FBI is no different. Of course, you had the video which we put out from uh, the Shadow Hawk drone, which is this 50 pound mini helicopter, uh, again funded by the DHS. Police departments across America are buying it with the aid of DHS funding. And the promotional video for that drone shows it spying on a quote, illegal gun sale. Mm -hmm. So I they're planning that. to use these that things for, for illegal gun sales in the US, according to their own promotional propaganda. So the fact that domestic drones have been on the agenda, you know, the FAA says, what, 30,000 drones in American skies within the next 10 years. It's already been happening for years. And I think one of the most mis popular misconceptions about drones is that they will be these huge predator type things. They won't. In 
five to ten years, they're going to have insect drones. They're already developing them under DARPA and other different agencies. Insect size drones that are going to whiz around your backyard and spy on you. So it's not going to be very visible, but it's going to be plentiful because they're going to get them down to a smaller and smaller size. And also we see them, not just the insect drones, but, you know, one of the, uh, I guess, retail types that you can go to a, a surveillance store, not just a surveillance store, but a uh, electronic store and purchase. You can rig these things up with cameras. We've also seen you can go on uh, YouTube and watch FPS Russia shoot one of those little drones and it has a gun attached to it. I mean, these things are very real, very feasible, especially as technology advances and these things become more readily available. Oh, certainly. The, the Shadow Hawk drone that I mentioned has the capability for a 12-gauge a shotgun to be attached as well as uh, a taser device. So they're going to have them for surveillance, they're going to have them weaponized, and, you know, we're going to be living in a they-live type scenario. But even the makers of the drones, uh, like David Cenciotti, who helped develop some of these swarm drones that work together, have openly said they're going to be used for homeland security purposes, hunting terrorists, you know, the DHS identifies as terrorists. Mm -hmm. So the scope of this is all going domestic over the next few years. And it's, it's kind of like the NSA revelation with the FBI revelation about the drones. We already knew it was happening. And now suddenly everybody is concerned about it. We've been concerned about it for years. Exactly. And just like you alluded to, the new domestic threat, uh, the terrorists, the Tea Parties, the guys with the gats and flags and uh, skin bucks and run trot lines. But, Paul, our time is short. In this segment, we'll come back on the next on the next break, and you can tell us about Kurzweil and transhumanists. I know you have a lot of that coming up. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody, state of mind at InfoWarsShop.com. It also comes with a free American Dream. This is a great animated film. And if you have about a 13-year-old, it's probably fine for them. But it goes over the history of the Federal Reserve. But also get the, uh, the state of mind at InfoWars Shop. It's a great film. It's a great thing for you and your family. Alex is in it. Many other great people are in it. And it's just one of the great products you can get at InfoWarsShop.com. And like I said, Alex will be back Sunday on the radio show. He's out on location right now with Rob Booth, so they're bringing you more special reports, more things. This is what your money and stuff goes to when you support the InfoWar, when you go to PrisonPlanet.tv and also InfoWars Nightly News tonight at 7 p.m. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all in one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.